Hello everybody, how is it going? Uh, today is kind of special because I'm going to do the next episode in English. Uh, like I mentioned on my Facebook a few days ago, I'm going to uh, produce most of my contents in English from now on, particularly on my YouTube and my Facebook. Uh, reason being that, well, well, first of all, I have been doing that long ago. I produced the contents in the both Cantonese and English. I mean, really, bilingual versions. I have different versions in different languages. But uh, after all these years, I have been becoming a little bit more busy, and then uh, I don't have the time to do bilingual versions. And a lot of the people who followed me, who watched my English versions videos, nowadays they can no longer understand what I'm talking about. So they requested me to do either subtitles or English versions. But uh, after quite some considerations, I, I find out that most of the people in Hong Kong have no problem understanding my English, so I think maybe it is a good idea to produce most of my, my contents in English instead. So that's why, here we are. Now, back to today's subject. Today I'm going to talk about Capture One, but not Capture One Pro, the versions that we have on our laptop or desktop, but Capture One on iPad, okay? Capture One has been on iPad for a few months already. I think it's three, four months. And uh, I've started trying it out since the beta versions. I, I did the beta test and I, I'm in love with it. I've been using it, I, I have tested it out. But to be honest with you, I seldom use it in my workflow. Uh, because I, I, I'm kind of lucky that whenever I'm going out to work, I have my assistants, I have my digital technicians, uh, uh, that I can bring my laptop with me, that uh, I can use a full function Capture One. I'm not saying that the Capture One on the iPad is not full function. You have most of the essentials, so uh, I think it's good. But then I, I still use a lot of my laptop. But now, there is a major change in the Capture One on iPad, which is going to change the game for quite a bit, which is finally they are incorporating tethering function onto the Capture One on iPad. So that's why today I want to talk about tethering with your iPad, and also I want to talk about uh, Capture One on iPad because I have not been spending up any time to talk about it uh, to, to my audiences, my, uh, to you. So that's why we're here today. So first of all, let's take a look at Capture One. As you can see, the screen that you are seeing is uh, actually a mirror of my iPad, okay? So first thing first, if you want to tether with your, your iPad, you will need a camera which is uh, compatible with Capture One iPad. The good news is if your camera is uh, compatible with Capture One Pro on your laptop or desktop, you're, you're almost good to go. There is only one brand which is currently not supported. Believe it or not, the camera which is currently not supported is actually Phase One. So, for Phase One users, you might need to wait a little bit longer because th they were saying that the, the technology in behind it is a little bit different. So that's why they need a, a little bit more time. So, what I need to do is to get a cable. The cable that I'm using is an optical fiber USB-C by Fiber, the company, which is a really good cable. All I need to do is to plug that in. So please look at the, the monitor of the iPad. I plug that in. As soon as I plug that in, you will see that under cameras, there is Canon EOS R5. As simple as that. You just need to plug that in, okay? Now then, the camera is set it up so that it's shooting full resolution raw. So let's take a look. Okay, I'll take one shot. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. As you can see, as soon as I press the shutter, you have the photo here. Okay, I can click onto it, enlarge it in full, full resolution. Okay, now you can see here, it's a CR3, it's a RAW file, full resolution, 8192 pixel by 5464 pixel is a RAW file, captured today, and the file size is 
56.1 megapixels megabyte okay which is pretty cool so I know that you have concerns with the speed so let's take a look at the speed I'm going to take quite a number of shots okay one two three one two three one two three one two three click 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 a few more okay here we go I think I took like 10 shots and they are all here and they are all in full resolution okay is pretty convenient I would say and it's really fast okay I can also uh, so-called retouch it but as you know I, I, I distinguish these two elements very distinctively we are doing a raw development we are not retouching it so let's try to do some adjustment to it for the time being let's just unplug the cable first okay let's take a look now we have a raw file here so the way that capturing on iPad works is uh, I, I would not say it's very different from uh, uh, our laptop or desktop but because the the uh, input method is very different if you're on your laptop or on your on your uh, uh, desktop you have your mouse or you have your Wacom tablet okay but now you are on uh, on your iPad so you can use your stylus instead of a mouse okay so let's take a look let's say this photo uh, let's take a look up here the first tag we have a rating let's say I like this one five star color tag green okay easy the second tag is mainly for presets okay I think it has something to do with the fact that if you are using an iPad on the field you want things to go really quickly okay so that that's why they are putting putting the preset tab on a second tab okay you can uh, use any of the, the styles if you have any here and you can import the styles that you have from your uh, Capture One Pro onto your iPad any one of them okay which is yeah I like this one good okay that's the preset and then we have uh, some other corrections mainly the rotation as you can see what I'm doing here is I can use my right hand on this side to do the rotation or actually if you want you can do this just tap on it and then here so when I'm operating it I can use both hands using my left hand to pick whatever adjustment I want to use and then the other hand to adjust it okay so basically I don't have to move my hand I just I'm just keeping my hands this way and I have no problem adjusting all the photo now the fourth tab which is the most essential one I would say now white balance if I want to adjust it same thing if I want to adjust the exposure okay HDR I want to bring down the highlight a little bit bring up the shadow a little bit okay and then clarity perfect so you have most of the functions that you have within your Capture One Pro on your uh, desktop or laptop so you can do most of the adjustments here so I would say if you're on the field let's say you are traveling or doing an outdoor shoot or doing an event job which you need to deliver your photo really quickly this could be a very good way to work and because at the end you can adjust the photo and then you export the photo on your iPad and then airdrop to let's say your phone or just use WhatsApp or whatever to send the file out now that we know that we could tether from our camera to our iPad and also that we could adjust the raw files on our iPad the next thing that I want to show you is how we could tether wirelessly from our camera to our iPad now it is actually easier than you might believe okay first of all I just need to of course turn on my camera and then I want to make sure that it is being connected to the Wi-Fi that I have in my office because my iPad is connected to the Wi-Fi in my office but if you are not having a Wi-Fi let's say you're outdoors you can generate a hotspot on your uh, camera or on your iPad they would same they would also also connect to each other okay 
Now that it is online, you can see that on my laptop, on my iPad, under cameras, there is an EOS uh, R5 showing here, but graded out. As you can see on the icon on the left, it is actually a wireless connection. All I need to do is to click on the three dots and then connect. And then on my, on my camera, it will show that it is connected. And then you will see that on the bottom right, you can see a button, which is uh, right in Canon there. Because if I press that button, it would actually trigger my camera to shoot. Now, I just shot a raw file. It would probably take us, I don't know, 7 to 10 seconds for the files to come back. Let's wait for that. Now, if we are shooting wirelessly, uh, raw files, it might not be very uh, practical in a lot of cases. But if you really want to send the raw file back onto your uh, uh, iPad, it is possible. But I think a more reasonable way of using this, particularly if you want to check for, let's say, check for focus or check for uh, composition, showing this to your clients, you, you can consider shooting in JPEG or a small JPEG just for reviewing or if you are, let's say you are, uh, I don't know, uh, a KOL or, or someone who want to have the photo quickly on your iPad, you can do so. So what I'm going to do now is to change the setting of my uh, camera to shoot the smallest uh, JPEG that we have and let's see how it would work. Okay, let's try it. One, two, three, one, two, three. Let's shoot a few more. Okay, I shot nine photos in total, and let's see what would happen. As you can see, there is a... Okay, the files are coming back now. The raw file just came back, and then, as you can see, the JPEGs are coming back all together. Okay, one after one. Now, depending on your network situation, the speed may change. But if you are only shooting the small JPEG for preview, actually, it would work. OK, let's try again. OK, small JPEG. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. OK, as you can see, the JPEGs are coming back pretty quickly. At least for a general review, you should have no problem. Though the resolution is not as high, but I think it is a very good way to help your workflow on location. Uh, for the time being, the speed is not very high, and I don't think that the situation would improve a lot in, in, uh, in the coming few years. So uh, at the end, you should still try to bring along a reasonable cable with you. Uh, like what I'm having here, this is a fiber, that the company is fiber, F-I-B-R-R. -R. Uh, the, the cable is actually an optical fiber, fiber cable. The one that I'm having here is a USB-C cable. Uh, and uh, I know that they are going to release a 10 meter version very soon. Uh, from what I've been testing, I've been using this for two months now, it is really good. So if you're considering a good cable for uh, tethering, you might want to consider this. Now, uh, though it's an optical fiber cable, it's not going to give you speed, just that it is going to give you more distance. And it is very reliable according to what I've been experienced in the past two months. Okay, now we have got the files on our iPad, what should we do now? Now, the final thing is, after you're done with the shoot, you want the file to go back onto your computer. What should you do? There are a few ways of doing it. First of all, you can, uh, let's say you want to uh, add a new album. Uh, let's say I name it as Picked It, okay? And then, among all captures, let's say I want to pick a few, okay? Let's say this one. Let's say one of them is JPEG, pick another RAW, okay, that's good. Let's add that to picked it, okay, add. Now I picked three photos, so down here in picked it, you can see that there are three photos, okay, and then I can click on the three dots on the side, and then I can add to cloud. What it's going to do is to going to connect 
to the cloud server by Capture One and it's going to upload all this photo onto the Capture One cloud. And when you go back to your Capture One Pro on your desktop or laptop, you can eventually synchronize all this photo back onto your computer. Let's take a look at that. Now I want to change this first to uh, Source 2. Okay, all right. So what you're seeing now is actually my computer, Capture One, okay. Now the files are still syncing in the back, okay, but let's see. If you, by default on your Capture One, you don't have that function of syncing back the photos from your cloud. What you need to do is to go on top, customize your two tab, okay, and then within there, you are going to see this, Cloud Transfer. I just need to add this icon back onto my uh, uh, toolbar and then what I need to do is to click onto it and eventually it's going to connect to the cloud by Capture One and for, for the time being you can see that there is no cloud album available because the files are still being synced back onto the cloud. Now here's the problem. Depending on your network speed, it might take a very long time. So uh, I think in some situations, this might not be very useful. But let's say you're shooting outdoor and uh, you are going to take quite a number of shots. And then between these shots, you upload a bunch of, of photo onto the server. And then on the other hand, back in your office, you can have a colleague or a retoucher downloading all these photos back onto your Capture One Pro so that you can connect a shoot which is outdoor with another uh, group of colleagues in office. That would make it very convenient for a lot of people. Sometimes, let's say you have overseas sh uh, shoots that you can send all these files back into your office. Really convenient. So, just now, all the files are, are uploaded. Let's Refresh it. Now, after refreshing it, you should see picked it two minutes ago. Okay, I just need to click on it and then I want to import that to the capture folder. Okay, import. And then Capture One Pro would then get the files from the cloud back onto my computer. Okay, so that is the first way that you can download the photos that you have on your iPad to your laptop or desktop. But of course, if you are in the same room, you don't have to do it. This method is mainly for people, let's say you are, you are overseas, you are shooting, you can have your colleagues or, or remote, hand, uh, remote control your computer at home to synchronize everything back onto your computer, okay? The other way, there are other ways of doing it, okay? Let's go back to, uh, go back to our uh, iPad. Okay, there are two other ways that you can do this. The first way is, let's say I still want these three photos. I can share them again. Uh, I want to share the originals because I want, want the raw files. Okay, export them. All I need to do is to airdrop it because I'm right beside my computer, right? So all I need to do is to pack my computer and then my computer would be notified okay as you can see that here receive the three photos from Yankov's iPad so I have the three photo down here in my download uh, download folder already that is the other way but if still this is not quick enough for you there is another way okay all you need to do is to go back into your iPad this time I want to save it to files and actually, for the iPads that has USB-C, you can plug in a USB-C SSD or, or something, or, or like a thumb drive, save to files, and then you will see that there is a demo SSD. I just need to click onto it and then save. Then the three files would be saved onto this SSD. I just need to un unplug it, plug that into my computer, and you are good to go. I think this would be uh, uh, the quickest way of doing things. 
if you have a lot of files, this is a way of doing it. And uh, maybe let's say you, you go out, uh, go out and shoot on your iPad, and then at the end of the day, you are back in your hotel or your office. You are downloading everything onto a SSD. Then you can do whatever you want with it. You can then manage it with a, a Capture One section or a Capture One catalog. So that is the way to do it. Okay. All right. So this is what I want to share with you today about Capture One on iPad and how it could be incorporated into our daily workflow. Uh, I know that some of you might have some other questions. Please leave messages down here and I'm going to get back to you and maybe I'll make another video to talk about them. All right, see you next time.